obvious repercussions. Wow, this racetrack is very slick after that first lap altercation. Kerry Mix got real loose going into turn one and two. Kerry Mix loose. It looked like it took a few laps for that 17 car. DJ Kennington, he gets sunk into the racetrack. And here comes Scott Steckley taking a look at the 12. High-tech drilling. John Chaventure of John Gunn. Uh, really good to see Johnny Gott running up front. We know he's a good shoe. You know he's got good equipment. Just good to see him up front here. Yeah, he's only been out to one other show so far this year. It was down in Delaware, and he ran in the top five nearly all night long before having a motor break in that car, so you know he's capable of running up front. Absolutely. Battle for eighth now as we ride on board with your points leader, Ron Beauchamp Jr. in the Mopar Dodge. Well, that's the 23 uh, laps for his car right in front of him. Remember last time they were here, that car was brand new and went home in a basket. Just a lot of spotter traffic, a lot of radio chatter here at St. Stash. Such a short track, the drivers need to know where the other drivers are. Scott Steckley puts that tow truck in a box. Canadian tire Dodge Avenger just noses it underneath. John Gott going into one, and he will pick up the spot. He's going to drag a lot mix with him. Ah, uh, great action all through the field here. Take a look at this. All these short track guys grew up in the Barry area and stuff. You got Mixie, you got Dilly, you got Johnny Gott. They've been to these short tracks before. Words that John Gull wanted to hear, you're clear as he'll pull down in front of the 23 Tim Horton Chevy of Jeff Lapsovitz. So Gunn will get back in line as the leaders start to work lap traffic. Andrew Ranger has some company though, and it's a 17 of Kennington on his back bumper. But again, Kennington slips up in one and two. Well, DJ's car only wants to work right in the bottom. We had a lap car in there. I don't think there was any contact. Just DJ gave him lots of room, got that right rear out in the, in the dirt again, and lost it some ground. The 55 of Dexter Stacy, the 97 of Hugo Vanini, and the 99 of Derek White all having a battle of their own towards the tail of the field. There is the 55 of Dexter Stacy right in front of the 17 of DJ Kennington as Kennington will go around on the high side. But down pit side, Todd Lewis is standing by with a pretty disillusioned number seven driver. Todd? Shock Villeneuve, disappointment, I can tell on your face. This was short rat track racing, I guess. Oh, yeah, it's very disappointing because you feel like you've lost the whole weekend doing nothing. So uh, that's a little bit frustrating. But uh, to not even do one lap, that's uh, mostly when the car is competitive. Uh, we knew we would have been fighting at the front with the team. So uh, that's, that's just annoying. Will we see you back in this series again before the end of the year? Ah, oh, well, today today doesn't really push me into positive idea about do, doing this uh, this again, but uh, you, you never know. I was doing this for fun uh, because it's next to home. Hopefully we'll see you back. Thanks, Jacques. And it looks like Villeneuve will actually race again. He'll be at Trois Rivières for Dave Jacobs Racing in August. That's something to look forward to. Absolutely. We got a good look out the front of the 17 car, DJ Kennington. He slid back to third behind the 22 of Scott Steckley. We got trouble. It's the three car, Jason Hathaway in the snap on Dodge Avenger as he loops it up in quarter number two. So Hathaway will get it going, but that'll draw another caution here at St. Dash. Now let's take a look at the replay. Down into turn one, a little bit of hot racing going on. He's on the outside. Oh, three wide, and he gets tagged by the 41. The 41 of Jonathan Bouverette gets into the back. Of the three cars, Jason White comes down pit lane and gets some service, a little bit of handiwork on the right front fender on the a and number 21. So Andrew Ranger leads here in St. Estash with 25 laps down. Welcome back to race number four of the 2009 NASCAR Canadian Tire Series presented by Mobile One. Andrew Ranger leads the time 250 with the 2008 champion Scott Steckley line up in second. Oh, Steckley jumped the cones on the restart. Let's see if NASCAR makes a call. There's restart cones on the fence, Dave, and the leader cannot take off until he passes the cones. And Steckley was clearly on the throttle hard. So no doubt NASCAR will be taking a look at that just to make sure they don't have to take a look long. Actually, it's a black flag wave by Sean Gibbs, the flagman, to the 2008 champion, the 22 of Scott Steckley. He'll take a drive-through penalty. Well, at least it's just a drive-through, Dave. It's not a stop and go, and he is the leader right now, so he should be able to get the pit road clean and quick. And there's a lot of racing left to go here. 219 laps left to be completed as we take a look at a battle for six spot with the 60 of Ron Beauchamp Jr. battling to the inside of that 12 car of John Gunn. And so shaping up for the lead as there goes Steckley for his drive-through penalty, and here comes Mix for the lead. That's a, that's a pair of those new spec motors side-by-side side down the front stretch. A brand-new chassis for the 
27 of Andrew Ranger as well as agonizingly slow the 22 of Scott Steckley rolls through pit lane. He will not go a lap down as he'll make it to the end of pit lane before the, the leaders come through. Johnny Gott struggling real hard to get around the outside of the 23 car. That's the 41 on the inside. That's another Dave Jacobs entry. And that's for seventh spot. Jonathan Bouveret in his first race here in the NASCAR Canadian Tire Series. Wheeling a wonderful race up inside the top ten with some of Canada's best short track racers. Absolutely, but he's got local knowledge here, and he's had lots of laps in other forms of motorsports. And this is a tricky track. St. Estache is one like no other in Canada. Local knowledge is a big help. Oh, it? it is so flat. You can miss the corner here. It's so easy. These cars are sprung so soft. You actually feel when you roll in the middle of the corner like the, the track is off camber. Really, it's just the car laying over on the right front. But it is really a tough racetrack to get a hold of. Challenge for the lead. Andrew Ranger on that white line. And he'll take over top spot as Gary Mix slots into second on board with DJ Kennington. Well, keep an eye on DJ's hands down the backstretch heading for three. And it'll really give you a good indication of how his car is handling. Nice, easy turn in. That car's not loose at all. That's just doing a nice job on corner entry. Is something up with the 0-2 of Kerry Mix? He seems to be slowing as DJ Kennington made it around on the outside to take over second as we look back to ninth spot between the 39 of Dave Whitlock and the 41 of Jonathan Boubret. Wow, Davey's doing a good job. Uncharacteristic, Dave won the last race here. He's a uh, really talented veteran, but he's got the right front fender tore off, so obviously he's got into some traffic early on. Guys, the 0-2 of Kerry Mix is back up to speed again, and crew chief Claire Bartlett is as confused as any of us. Kerry is not saying anything on the radio, did not mention that he flipped ignition boxes, but missed a shift or something and slowed down, lost the lead, but he's back up to speed and fighting again. Thank you. Uh, sitting in fifth spot, chasing that man, the 27 of Andrew Ranger continues to lead the Tide 250 here at Autodrome St. Estes. One driver is back in on track as the 95 of Anthony Simone, but many, many laps down. He had to change a broken axle. Now he's got to keep up a minimum speed or else the black flag will come out from NASCAR. Again, we get a great onboard shot here with the 17 of DJ Kennington. Look, watch his handwork on the wheels. This car is handling really well. Nice and smooth on exit, so you know the car is not loose. Maybe a little bit of understeer on entrance by the amount he's turning the wheel. Now, here's a good look at Beauchamp as well. Oh, you can really hear that car spin the tires off the corner. I was just going to say, you can hear a little bit more wheel spin as we look at this battle for 12 between the 21 of Jason White and Kent Noon in the 18 riding on board with Jason White. Now take a look at his hands. Yeah, his car is a little bit loose. You see him correcting back to the right coming off the corner. So the, the tail end of the car is trying to come around. So he's putting in the, the steering wheel to keep it off the fence. So you can really get a feel for it off the sound of the engine as well. Kennington, for example, not spinning the tires too much. Have a listen. Listen to this. This is cool. That thing is stuck in Kennington's going to the front. As comparison, the Jason White number 21 car spinning the tires down the straightaway. So that makes a really big difference as Scott Stackley continues to work his way up through the field. Now in a battle for eighth spot with the 19 of Brad Graham. Whoa, we got one around us. It's the 21. Just as we were talking about a potentially loose race car, the A&W cruising the dump. Number 21 of Jason White goes around, so he grabs a gear, but caution out once again here in St. Estes. Oh, he was loose off of turn and forward, got down the bottom underneath the lap car, got boxed in and just had to power it to keep it under the sand trap. He just punished that thing up through the gearbox. Smoke Joe and hanging on. It's pit stop time. A lot of cars down pit lane, including the 60 of Ron Beauchamp Jr. He's on the 9 of Mark Dilly. So is the 17 of DJ Kennington. Oh, the wedge adjuster going in the right rear. Could be the panhard bar, but probably a turn of wedge. We got air pressure adjustments on that car, and we're getting chassis adjustments on the 39 of Dave Whitlock. They're all trying to figure out the perfect setup to catch that man, Andrew Ranger, your leader. 